So here to share the new beauty movements shaping this new decade as Beauty EQ editor. Welcome back, Trudy. Hi, how are you? I'm really, really well. Good. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks. This is where I learn all about what I need to buy and what I should be looking at for my skin. So first up, Ageless Beauty is going to be celebrated. What's all that about? Look, I think brands and retailers have done a really good job at representing different ethnicities and communities. And Fenty Beauty was probably the catalyst for that with a range of different foundation colours that suited everyone's skin tone. Um, but I'm going to put it out there. I think the beauty industry is still marketing to a white millennial. So there's a lot of work to be done there. Yeah. Um, and the big trend that Mintel, which is a global research um, company, uh, coining ageless is the message that we're going to be hearing. So it's inclusive. You can be any age and use any product. I mean, that's the idea. Mm. Um, and hello, I mean, when you think about 40% of consumers buying beauty products are over 50, wow. they feel invisible. So all of a sudden there is going to be a shift where, you know, women are of any age can use anything. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, so what about conscious capitalism and um, slow beauty and blue beauty? So they all kind of mean the same thing. I think big beauty brands now are making commitments to sustainability and not just re um, in sourcing ingredients, but compostable packaging, mm. reusable packaging, um, sustainability in what they do. Within that trend is one called waterless beauty and brands are working on formulating waterless products and actually making products without water because that water's got to go somewhere. Yeah. You know, and it goes down the drain and, and into our rivers and seas. So I think that's a big trend. And the blue beauty trend, I mean, I think now more than ever, this new decade is one where we have to think about the well-being of our planet. And you only have to see the extremes and temperatures across New Zealand, yeah. let alone globally. So beauty brands are now contributing to that. Um, in that they're caring for our planet. And actually, one brand that's doing that really well, and it's new in New Zealand, although it's 45 years old, born in the UK, right. is Faith in Nature. Um, and it's really done a great job at um, sourcing sustainable product uh, ingredients for 14 okay. years. There's right. a great shampoo bar, soaps, hair care, my favourite body wash, coconut yeah. body wash. The shampoo thing, the shampoo bars are a big thing at the moment they're too, aren't really they? They're a really big thing and they're really, really great, especially using less water. I mean, if we're thinking right now, we're in drought in New Zealand, so using less water. But also, oh, yeah. um, you know... Thinking about the, the ingredients through to the packaging, through to making things locally, um, they coined this phrase that natural ethical products should be available to everyone. So this is available at the supermarket. At the supermarket? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's clean beauty too is sort of like moving aside and it's more about sustainable, isn't it? That's what I we're talking about. I think it is. You know, we've, we've got clean beauty and green beauty. It's more about sustainability and blue beauty, which is that new, okay. new term that we talked about. Okay. Okay, what about microbiome skincare? Yeah, well, this is interesting. You know how we are all obsessed with what we eat and our gut health? Yes. Well, it's exactly the same um, principle as skin health. So apparently Mintel, again, said that we have a trillion microorganisms organisms sitting on our skin and not one of us have the same ones or the same makeup to oh, them. Wow. Okay. So you're going to see a real surge of bacteria balancing ingredients in skincare. And it makes sense because if your skin is balanced, it's healthy. Um, and one brand that I think we overlook again available in the supermarket, is um, Aveeno. They've got Dumixer and they've got a skin relief product. This is made with colloidal oatmeal, and I don't know if your grandmother, is, if you've ever got sunburn, your grandmother said sit in an oat bath, an yes, oatmeal bath. Yes, yes. This is it. You used to you know? do that, but put face packs of yeah. oats on your face. And so the fermented oats speak to that microbiome trend. Um, there's moisturisers, um, body washes. I've seen so many people sunburnt this summer. Mm. Shocking. Not me. So that is great, a body wash. The other one is Elizabeth Arden, um, their Superstar range. They do a um, probiotic boost. Now, just to make it clear, prebiotics feed probiotics, and they are what are good for your skin. But you need those ingredients to make them work. So this is a good little sheet mask, a nice. probiotic boost. For Who doesn't skin. love a sheet mask? Exactly. And Cause, a Greek brand that's doing really well in New Zealand, um, this is at Mecca, they have, I think it's the first ever superdose, um, it's called Hydrobiome Superdose Anti-Pollution Face Mask, it's a real mouthful, but that is a really great product for overnight, you know, getting your skin balanced right. if it's feeling dry, I'm have a little flaky, smell of that. Ooh. little bit red. Made with Greek yogurt. So this is anti-pollution. What's all that skincare yeah, about? Yeah, and that's our next little trend. Apparently, about 91% of our world's population lives in areas where the air quality doesn't meet the World Health Standards. Mm -hmm. So 
if you understand how the skin works, then we, our skin is the interface between the environment and our body. So if we keep it healthy with anti-pollution skin care or ingredients that address that, and that's antioxidants that help scavenge those free radicals that are flying around in the environment, then we've got a better chance of keeping our skin healthy. Yeah. Um, one brand, and they've just got a new launch this week actually, in the extra firming range at Clarins, were actually the first brand to really champion anti-pollution using plant extracts, and kangaroo flower is one of their most potent ones in that one. Right. Um, well, it's a firming one, I'm going to just have a little... Yeah, um, for the neck and decollete. Now, I think ooh. that, yeah, very handy. So you work that out straight away. Great tube for travel. Very good. I think we forget about mm -hmm. our neck and decollete a little we bit. We do, just while we've got on there. Sorry, going, microphone how people. How low yeah. are you going to go? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Right, let's so we do. Well, like we forget about that, don't we? Because we don't see it as much. So I yummy think, too. Yeah. I love that smell. It's nice. Um, and so that's full of great um, ingredients. And just quickly, um, our own um, Manuka doctor is addressing anti pollution. That arrived actually yesterday um, with Manuka honey. We know how nourishing that is. Bee venom and peach flower extract. And that's the night serum, which I think is great because Ooh. that's when your skin is renewing I like, itself. I like to try everything out here. Okay, so, so you're going to see more of anti-pollution skin care. Good, definitely. it's important too, and I'm going to have really a nice firm hand on that one and a beautiful one there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about gender neutral beauty. Um, that's something that basically means that everyone can share, is that right? Yeah, that's right, and I think, you know, it's no surprise that brands like Fenty, Glossier, The Ordinary, Milk Makeup, they've done a great job at being inclusive. So it's not about your sex or your gender, it's about your skin, mm -hmm. and that sort of talks about the ageless beauty a little bit too. But get ready for a gender-free frenzy or gender-fluid frenzy when right. it comes to beauty. Um, and not just what you expect skincare, there's going to be a lot of men's skincare or gender neutral skin care and concealers foundations that men can wear as well right. I'm not sure how brave our New Zealand blokes are going to be but oh. I say go for it getting braver by the minute and What's one brand that really did pick up on that unisex fra and launch unisex fragrance was Calvin Klein um, back in 84 the original CK1 this one CK everybody champions yep. that gender fluid story give it a try Ooh. and it's going to um align with their, Ooh, yeah. their boxer briefs are going to be relaunching and they're going to be gender fluid so anyone can wear them girls or boys and this fragrance is a nod to that because you can see the little band on it that you yeah. can take off um Huge. and um the other thing is it's uh 79 um, natural ingredients in that too and, and for and a natural alcohol which is for a fragrance is pretty and it smells great i'll be interested to see those boxes that are you know for both males and females because it'd be interesting anyway thank you so much trudy Absolute pleasure. always a pleasure now if you want more from trudy you can head to her website beautyeq.co.nz